Dr. Oni Blackstock is health justice founder and executive director. And Dr. Blackstock, thank you so much for joining us today. Given the spread of Omicron, a number of countries in Europe especially have increased their crackdown on COVID. Germany and Ireland have imposed curfews and travel restrictions. And the Netherlands recently announced a nationwide lockdown of non-essential businesses until mid-January. Should we be expecting something similar here in the U.S.? Thank you so much for having me on. And I think that's the question for a lot of people. Um, I think that um, in Europe, they've taken you know, really bold steps to stem the tide of the Delta wave and now the Omicron wave. And um, we've heard from, I'm here in New York City, from the New York City mayor saying that it's unlikely that there'll be a similar lockdown here in New York City. And I believe also at the federal level, um, the White House is saying that it's very unlikely that we'll see um, lockdowns being recommended as well. But I think we need to consider all the tools in our um, prevention toolkit. Dr. Blackstock, Anjali here. I wonder about the travel bans. In particular, we saw Israel uh, block travel from the U.S. Or, or really put a restriction on that. And we're seeing sort of a repeat of last year. I know there's been a lot of discussion about the impacts of travel bans. Uh, is, is it safe to say right now that really the focus is on vaccinations and other tools that need to be used to curb the pandemic? Or should are we at a point with as few vaccinations as we have in the country that travel bans should work? Well, yeah, I think this is the, the question. I think, you know, at this point, Omicron is really all over the place. We've seen it some um, very dramatic and very quick spread. So I'm not clear um, and not sure, you know, how effective these travel bans will be given that Omicron is, is so widespread. But what might be really more helpful and we have more evidence for it is, you know, doing um, testing and before departure, when people arrive at their locations, providing quarantine and isolation support for travelers if needed. Those strategies um, can be much more helpful, I think, um, versus sort of these um, sort of widespread categorical um, travel bans. Hey, Doctor, it's Adam. Um, I, I, pointing the finger of blame never accomplishes anything, but the administration, the Biden administration, knew a month ago that there was concern about the variants, and then they 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 talked about the the steps taken to make sure our insurance would cover testing. Why not just send all of us the over-the-counter antigen tests? Was this a great fail on the part of DC? Yeah, these are really important questions. We need really the White House to be much bolder and much more ambitious in um, its plans. And a few months ago, uh, Biden had said that they were going to use the Defense Production Act to manufacture um, much more um, at-home rapid tests. And we still see, I'm here in New York City, we're seeing incredibly long lines for folks who cannot access rapid tests anywhere um, and in waiting, waiting in two, three, four-hour lines um, to get tested. So we really need the White House to be much bolder in its approach. We need obviously billions more um, tests or at least millions more tests available to um, Americans. We also need to see um, recommendations around um, mass guidance. It's important for Biden to use his, his influence to compel states to reinstate many of their mass mandates, which fell away when the CDC released their guidance in May saying that um, people who were vaccinated did not need to wear masks indoors. Um, there's so much more that we can do, for instance, mass mandates for domestic travel within the United States, um, ensuring that there are appropriate quarantine and isolation supports. There are many things that can be done that we're not seeing this administration do and speak on. And instead, there's been a really vaccine-centric and vaccine-focused approach to the pandemic response. That's a really good point, Dr. Baxaka, especially because it's a continuation of an of an old administration. But I want to turn to Dr. Anthony Fauci. We just heard him talk and sort of go through uh, the impact of the virus and, and really talk about transmissibility and virology of it, but also warning about us not knowing uh, the impact of Omicron yet. Just listen to what he had to say. And over the past several weeks, beginning in the end of October and the beginning of November, we are now on an upsurge of Delta. And I'll get to that in a moment. We have not yet seen the full impact of the very ominous Omicron uh, variant. Next slide. 
So as you can hear, you know, warning, and I know there was a lot of discussion when we first heard about Omicron uh, that there wasn't necessarily a concern about it during this winter surge, but it seems like that's changing pretty quickly. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I know it's a really um, interesting point. Actually, there was an article just out today just really talking about just some of the challenges that we have in the United States due to the lack of sort of investment that we have put in place for our public health data system. So we are in a position where we're having to learn from other countries um, about Omicron, about its transmissibility, about whether it causes more severe disease and to the extent to which it may evade um, protection um, that vaccines provide or what that prior infections provide. So we're really having to learn a lot of this information secondhand. Um, but I suspect, obviously, as Omicron becomes the more dominant strain here in the United States, we'll be learning a lot more. But we're kind of behind the, the eight ball. And we really need to, in parallel, as we're working to develop a, a bolder and more effective pandemic response, also work on investing in these public health data systems that will help to answer these questions. Dr. Blackstock, Bloomberg reported earlier today that school closing surged by 81 percent in the most recent week, given the Omicron uh, variant spread across the U.S. Is this something that you expect to see continue, especially at the elementary school level and uh, for children really of all ages? Right. Yeah. And I think this is something that's on the minds of many people, including many parents uh, like myself. Um, you know, we are seeing here in New York City as well, um, classrooms starting to close due to outbreaks. And I think that this is something that many jurisdictions um, and localities are really going to have to consider um, whether, you know, if rates get to a certain point uh, where, you know, closing schools um, is the safest thing for everyone. I think that that is something that really needs to be considered. The issue, though, is that there is a lack of, of guidance around um, data driven policies to say at what level of community transmission should we be, for instance, closing schools. And so we need to really help have the CDC, for instance, help to establish guidance that will help state and local jurisdictions with figuring out, you know, right now, is this the important time? Is this a, a time to uh, close schools in terms of safety for school staff, for students, and for teachers? All right, we'll leave it there for now. Dr. Oni Blackstock, Health Justice Founder and Executive Director, and Yahoo Finance's Anjali Kimlani, thank you both so much.